Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today. Got the pleasure of sitting down with a true heavyweight of the Warhammer fantasy scene. It is Mr. Scott Reed. Good evening, sir. Hello. Thank you for having us on. Good to have you. Hello. Good to uh, good to catch up. Normally, yeah, I see good the events and we bump good into each good other. And it's all very quick. Yeah. So, um, I say you're a heavyweight of the scene, and uh, I guess what I mean by that is that. You know, you, you play a lot of games, you collect a lot of armies, and if you're not at an event, then you're uh, planning the next one. Yeah, well, uh, you, similar to yourself in many regards, isn't it? <laughs> you just try to get as, as many events as possible, get as many, genuinely as many games in as possible. I think we're trying to trying to get at least a game a week in, for the most part, like in the local scene, and yeah, attend as many events as we could humanly get to, to be honest. And and the next one's Warhammer World? Warhammer World this weekend, yes. Yeah. Um, How many much. players go into that? It's 80. 80, I think, is confirmed. Okay, wow. Um, the last one, so I went to the first Warhammer World 2D event that they had, and that was only at 1,500 points as well, um, mm. and that was a 60-player event, so I think they've really upped the ante a little bit, um, up to 2,000 points, to which seems to be the, the level at the moment. Sure, yeah. But yeah, 80 players should be quite quite something. That might be like the biggest one so far, the, what, from what I've seen. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen a bigger one. Um, yeah. No, I mean obviously TC's was was pretty large. Did it end up at fifty? It was fifty people. Fifty to sixty, wasn't it? Something yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, I think there was another one. I don't know if it's actually happened yet or not. That was around about a sixty mark. So I think this one yeah. will be the biggest I'm aware of for sure. Because there's been other ones that have a big capacity, but they haven't they haven't quite sold out. People yeah. have said, "Oh, we've got room for a hundred, but. It's easy to say you've got room for 100, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we could fit 100 people in the room. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. We've got 30, but we could fit 100 people. Yeah, you're just, uh, you know, you're rubbing, you're rubbing backsides with the person yeah. behind you. Like. <laughs> um, um, but you've also got an event this weekend, haven't you? It's it's all um, going on. That's right, yeah. So I'm going to a little one day, uh, um, which should be interesting. Uh, no, no, no painting requirement, so they're trying to get the new players involved. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that will have a difference or not. No, and I don't. You know, to be told, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Early while we're the game's still settling, there's lots of new players coming. I think having a lack of paint requirement is a good thing to get more people into the hobby, for sure. In my opinion, at the minute. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, I mean, no, no. Fast forward a year down the line or so, or I suppose whenever all the arcane journals eventually come out and all the models are out, that might change to sort of the old standard of painting requirement, etc. But I, I do think in the current <clears> climate, not enforcing that will absolutely welcome more people into the hobby, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, it, it is early days. And yeah, this, it's funny. One of the questions I was going to ask you is who, who plays Old World, you know, because there must still be a lot of players who have, you know, what was it like six, seven, seven months ago or so it came out. And so there must have been players who have, got their new starter set or whatever and they're, they're just still painting their army they, they might not be oh, playing yeah. any games it's got to be i think there's got, there's still evidently a group who haven't transitioned to all world or haven't tried it yet and are still right. sort of clinging on the eighth edition with sort of like real, real veracity um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well, well we'll come to that later because yeah. i because okay. i really like eighth edition um but and, no, i think you're right i think there's a lot of people probably still building their armies especially those who are methodical like good painters and really want to take the time and didn't have the uh like armies just sitting around like sort of you or i yeah, yeah, yeah. um so I think was, you're probably you're right i think the the community is still probably quite in flux at the minute which is quite exciting in a lot of ways absolutely yeah yeah and i'm i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i want to get into the the nitty-gritty of the of the meta or so-called meta yeah pick your brain about some of the the competitive side of things but i suppose but before we do i mean would you would you class yourself as a competitive game? Oh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know in many ways. Yeah, because I, like I love tournaments. Like I love yeah. tournaments, and I, I think I think actually anyone who says they don't like to win is probably just lying. To be honest, um, yeah. But there's there's not there's liking to win and there's not liking losing as well. Yes, I was about to say I would rather <laughs> lose a good game than win a bad game. Yeah, yeah. Like for sure. Um, I'd rather make sure we walk away from the table with both people having had a good time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Than sacrifice that for a win. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I've got to the stage now where, I mean, I've been painting lots of Orcs and Goblins recently, 
and before I played dwarves a lot, and I find that people have a better game if you're playing orcs and goblins, just generally, because there's more <laughs> wacky stuff that goes on. Yeah, there's just things that you can smile at as well, isn't there? Right, right. And and I think I might just take orcs and goblins to every tournament now. <laughs> you know, it, it's just fun. It's just fun. Because it's more fun. Yeah, exactly. And if you've got a dwarf gun line as well, and sometimes it can be not as fun. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, because naturally they play the way they play, and that, that yeah. is just how they are. And that's oh, that's what, what it is, yeah. It's yeah. not... Because you're not trying to have a good time or that, but like the, the army naturally plays how it plays. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know, because I do have sort of combo feelings. I think when you go into a, a big multiplayer tournament and you there's nothing wrong with going out and wanting to be competitive to try to do as good as, as well as you can. Um, and at the end of the day, people pay their money to play the hobby like their own, however they want. Oh, of course, in, yeah. In many respects. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, I would say I was... I'm, I mean, I do love a competition, so I, I, I am. Com I like the competitive side of Warhammer. Yeah. I genuinely do. And you're like me, and that you like the social side of just meeting people. And oh yeah, isn't that? I mean, isn't that one of the best parts of the hobby? That Absolutely, yeah. yeah. By its very nature, it's a two-player game, so you must socialize with someone. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I, I don't have as much spare time as other people, and I, I spend much more of my time painting and reading the books and stuff. Yeah, and just enjoy when I get away from it. It's like it's such a release for me. Like I can go away for the weekend and and have fun, you know. So that's oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, like including yourself, I've met lots of really like, cool people through yeah. Warhammer, and like that's that's the best part of the hobby. Meeting like so many new people who I would like, can then consider friends as well. It's, yeah. it's real. And people from up in the north of England, like yourself, I wouldn't otherwise meet, you know. Yeah, yeah, the, forgotten, <laughs> the frozen north of here. The frozen north, yeah, the forgotten north. The right? forgotten north, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, 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 I've, uh, obviously you guys, you play with the likes of Andy, who I've played before. Yeah. Uh, Stan, who I haven't met, but obviously I've heard him on your podcast. Oh, have you not? Oh, um, I should have introduced you guys at the last Triple Crown. Yeah. Right, because he was there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we but, play um, a lot. Because um, I like your channel, because you... you I've noticed you, you you pick apart lists in a very kind of like with a competitive hat on, like saying, mm -hmm. you know, is every part of my list pulling their weight? And and so you've got a definitely a competitive um, eye on list building and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I've been throwing together someone's journey just for fun. But I do, when I go to an event, like I do try to make a list as competitive as possible whilst being fun to play. Yeah, because you also talk about the rule of cool, right? It's in the sense that... Oh, yeah. Like, you might just it, pick something because you like the model. Oh well, from the at Warhammer World, the fourth coming again, I'm taking uh, Sepulchral Stalkers from the Tomb Kings, and they're absolutely only in there because the models are cool and they're painted. Like they are absolutely not an optimal choice, but they're also cheap enough that I can throw them away relatively. So yeah, 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 exactly. And and it, in my opinion, that's what Warhammer's about. It's 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 getting that balance, isn't it, between something that's just really cool. And also something because because you can have a cool army that's also good, you know. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot. Of, I think there's a misunderstanding in some in some parts that that like, you can't be both fluffy. Oh, sorry, you can't be both cool themed and competitive. And I think you absolutely right. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I appreciate they're a strong army at the minute, but I mean, we both know some players. Obviously, at the last event, Brett's can make both incredibly competitive lists, but that they're still really on theme. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It just as an example out of nowhere. Well, um, I've been having a lot of fun with the uh, Nomadic War recently. Oh, well, I mean, that army that you showed us that you took the Triple Crown looked yeah. incredibly fun. <laughs> yeah, cheers, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I've got these I've got these two Snotling Punk Wagons, right, which which is actually a really difficult model to paint, right, because you've got all these little Snotlings, and they're crap in the new edition, right? <laughs> they're just terrible. But I can't, I can't take a Nomadic War army and not bring them along with me. Do you know what I mean? It would just be wrong. That and they're a cool model that you've and they're a cool lot of painting. So they got they're in the list. They're in exactly. Yeah. They're in even though they do nothing. We'll get. <laughs> <laughs> they just. But they just look good. They look, look good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, and like, you know, you, you're a good painter, so you you want your good stuff on the board because it looks nice. Yeah, that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, is is there a meta currently for Warhammer the Old World? Is I think, I think there's been a lot of people like I think the meta's. It's definitely, well, there's a definitely non infantry meta at the, right. at the minute, is, is the sad reality. Um, I think when 
hopefully like a match play guy comes out and scenarios might change that. Um yeah. And I think certain armies hurt more by that. Like I think if you look at the two, like the, the high elves, for example, aren't doing great in the competitive scene. But it's because they've yeah. got really good infantry. They do. Infantry are pointless. Yeah. Um yeah. so I think there's a there's a non-infantry meta. I think I don't know, there's a monster and an agile meta. I think you want either skirmishers, fast, mobile stuff, and yeah. naturally dragons are incredibly powerful at the minute, unless you're playing Bretts, in which case the Brett Lord's going to come and you'll, you'll roll a six eventually and kill you. Okay, I'm glad you said that, because, you know, for, for those of you watching this podcast, I haven't spoken, I haven't asked Scott that question before, right? You, you've just come out, that's the first time yeah. I've asked you that question, yeah? And I, I'll say the same thing. I think it's I think it's Hero Hammer, I think it's, it's Max Characters, it's um, no infantry, and it's flyers and cavalry and monsters and fast-moving stuff, and that, that's what I see. I moment. think so. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think... Um... I think there's room to evolve it. I definitely do. I think I think infantry do have a place. I just don't have a place yet. Yeah. If that yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we're fingers crossed then, in other words. We were kind of that's, well, that, that's my hope. Like I do because yeah. I don't want infantry to not have a place. Like it's right by a warhammer. Like, I want but nobody nobody does. everybody agrees with that. Yeah. Everybody wants infantry to have a place. So so it will eventually because people will find a way of doing it, even if it's not games workshop that takes the lead on it, you know. That's true, but I mean, I, I do expect GW to release like an official match play guide at some point because they've been quite open in a lot of their source material that Old World is designed as a oh, not quite narrative, but a narrative game rather than a competitive game. So I do yeah. expect them to sort of bring some amendments and rule adjustments per se to adjust the narrative feel to a more competitive one i'm hoping with that you will get a tone down of the level of characters and the dominance of characters um and yeah. make troops more worthwhile is me hope like, you know i hope that but I they've hope. deliberately gone 50 percent characters yeah and they've deliberately gone with the mounts add their wounds to the character and they've deliberately nerfed cannons all at the same time you know yeah. So I think it is by design. They want it to be that way. Um, I think the, I think the one big things on the I think the one big monsters on the table. Yeah. And yeah. to be fair, in a, in a lot of respect, I get why they, they were never seen on the table in eighth edition, and they've got lots of lovely big monsters. Yeah. And they want to sell lovely big models, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> who, who doesn't want a lovely big model? Like, I, I, I agree. Really I agree. Model. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wish it. There was. There's got to be a balance there somewhere. Like, I want lovely big models. Yeah. Because it's, it's a fantastical like land and area. Like I want to see dragons. I mean, not as many to be fair, um, but some. <laughs> I want to see some dragons. Yeah. Um, but I want dragons to have noticeable weaknesses, and I think that's the at the minute that's probably that's the problem that they, they don't have noticeable weaknesses for the most part. Yeah, yeah, and I actually agree with nerfing cannons because it just became such a risk to take a monster like an 8th edition because if you come up against cannons you're just going to lose that monster before he gets into combat whereas you know if the monster actually did get into combat it could still handle itself you know it, you've got to be wary a big block of infantry can still fight back and you know they've got step up but yeah. you, know, you can still you know, my my issue and I've been quite vocal to anyone who would listen to this previously one of my biggest issues from the 8th edition was steadfast like, I just hated the rule like, I just yeah. hated the rule right okay and if you could charge him with a monster You'd almost certainly just lose through step. You'd just you'd never win because steadfast would just hold infantry there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do think infantry needed toned down from eighth edition. Yeah, I just I just don't know if the balance is quite where it needs to be. In fact, I don't think the balance is where it needs to be. So I, I so I so I I I, I love I love the steadfast rule. I actually think that um it it, it gives a role for um weak tr troops, whether it's your goblins or your clan rats or your or, or basic empire state troops, rather than just being able to charge them with some elite troops and then they flee, it actually gives a role for big blocks of of weak troops. But I agree with you on the on the monsters in that they they took away the concept of unit strength, right? And yes. and you and your big monster could still be held up by one rank, and that was a big mistake, you know. So yes. so bringing the unit yeah, strength back as is a, definitely as a concept. Mistake. I'm not against. I just I was I just didn't like the rule. Yeah. I think those, again, I think that it was almost there, but not quite for me. I mean, yeah. still played it for 
how about, God, how about what, a, a decade of 8th edition we play? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think they needed to give monsters a big unit strength so that you would need several ranks in order to stay steadfast against a monster, not just one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That that would that would have give or take fixed it. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe beyond one rank, something Maybe. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But um. But anyway, that. Well, I mean, I'll come back to that because I mean, I would I would like to see, and obviously, I'm talking about the core rules here. It's not going to change overnight. But I yeah. would like to see your um your unit strength linked to your ranks in some way because you know while we're talking about inventory, that you know you've got a, a, a unit that's in a line or a unit that's deep with ranks. And they both have the same unit strength, and therefore they're both just as hard to shift. Whereas I, I like the concept of having like a wide formation for lots of attacks, and then a deep formation for more defensive. And I like that. Um... So I like what they've done is in. I like the I like the concept of you've got your, your marching column, or you've got yeah fighting column, um, or whatever the terminology is. I forget, but. I love the idea that you can you can go into marching column and, and be really fast um, across the board. I mean, I don't see it very often, but you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do like they're trying to do some. I say likes a strong. I do li- uh, hats off them for trying to do something different with yeah. combat. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I don't think it's quite there because I think the concept of just everything in a huge rank fighting is is a bit odd. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just. Um, yeah, the style of it because you, you you are getting supporting attacks. It's just they're on the sides rather than. From the yes, side. yeah. So they haven't stopped supporting attacks. They've just changed them, and I don't yeah. think they've changed for the yeah. better in that regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I do really agree with their concept of getting rid of hordes. Yeah, because Eighth Edition needed hordes. It had killer spells to deal with hordes, so that sure. things went hand in hand for yeah. me. Yeah. This edition doesn't have killer spells, so it doesn't need masses of infantry. Yeah, no, um, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and I can see what they're trying to do by having making it more optimal to take smaller units of infantry that are that are wider than they are deep, and it's more fun to paint as well. Like people want to paint, you know, a few sword masters and a few phoenix guard and a few white lions. They don't want to paint forty white lions. Yeah, 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 yeah. and I don't know. Yeah, because. It... It's it's very similar to eighth. And, sorry, it's very similar to sixth in lots of ways. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I loved. I like sixth edition. I played sixth edition a lot. Probably secondary to eighth edition. Okay. Um, in fact, I've loved whatever edition was live at the time. To be honest, I just like playing <laughs> Warhammer. So I, I'll I'll play any edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think in in almost in many ways, all world is less a new edition of Warhammer and and very noticeably a new game. Yeah, completely. Um, and I think that's what's some of the challenges people are still very naturally in an 8th edition mindset because it was the longest, I'd say live game, but obviously it was dead for a lot, probably the largest part of the game. But yeah, a lot of people, have, they only really know 8th edition as Warhammer. They don't, a lot of people haven't yeah. played 6th edition. Like a lot of them, a lot of people aren't as like, long in the tooth as I and have played lots of different editions. A lot of people have only yeah. played 8th. So, to those people, it's a huge culture shock. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually played fifth, uh, and well, a bit, bit of fourth and fifth, like when I was a teenager. Yeah. And then I didn't play sixth or seventh at all, and then came back after eighth had died. <laughs> so, oh, really? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I, I missed the whole of sixth and seventh, and I missed the, the launch of AOS and all that. Um, and uh, and and now so I've been playing eighth for for a while, and then uh, and then and now old world, yeah. But it's. It, we've, I guess we've got to be careful as we as we talk, not to sort of compare it to eight too much. Because as you say, no, it's, it's, it's they different... are very different. In fact, for anyone who's played it, it was a very niche game. But there was a, a game out many years ago called Warhammer Ancient Battles. Yeah, yeah. A lot of all world core mechanics are re- very reminiscent of Ancient Battles, which was always a very very good system. But it was such a niche game; it was very yeah. wasn't played well, like widely at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I like yourself. I played a lot of sort of third, fourth, fifth when I was a lot younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixth got really into the game. Didn't really play much seventh at all, to be honest. Like that time in period of my life, I just really didn't really Warhammer. Okay. Um, and then you like came back into eighth, and then I played eighth for however many years eighth was out. Yeah, yeah. So go, so going back to the meta discussion, then. So you know, characters. 
flyers, cavalry, and everything. Although sometimes I hear online, right? And I hear especially like the, the sort of the Nottingham crowd, right? And they're talking about dwarves winning tournaments, empire gun lines, yeah. all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen any like shooting lists doing well. And and yet it seems like they've got a bit of a a bit of a microcosm there where they're all kind of going to these TSN arena tournaments. Yes. And um, I, I can't come to it, so I've not been to one yet, although yeah. they are very much on my list to attend. Um, I haven't I'm, even seen these advertised anywhere, yeah. these, these TSN things. But uh, Sorry? I haven't seen tickets for them advertised anywhere. No, they, they pretty much just only get advertised and they go live via Eventbrite. Oh, Eventbrite, okay. Um, and because it's got such a pretty like, loyal f- following, obviously, Nottingham's got a good scene, naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I think it's a 30... 30- 30 35 possibly uh, but it's in itself you can rely on it like a minimum of 20 pretty much all of the time sure 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 um and by the way i know if you've spoken some people who've been and speak very highly of the events but i think you probably you mentioned it there with the, the microcosm but when you've got fairly set people playing like they almost build their own their internal meta that's you know, what i'm saying yeah, yeah for sure so maybe um, like you know the first few weeks they're all bringing dragons and then then they stop that and they all start to bring Monster Slayer and Vile Tide and everything. Yeah, and then that and ends and now they're all bringing gun lines. And I mean, I think the, the yeah. single most disgusting list in all the world is actually not, doesn't have a dragon. It's it's the vampire scream list. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I played it twice. <laughs> I, I played against it once, which was awful. But I, I played it twice against starting to test it for an event. Right. right. Um, and it is comfortably the most competitive list I could put together. It is disgusting. Sure. I, just, I couldn't take it and enjoy myself for a weekend. And I certainly, whoever I played is, like, I certainly wouldn't get any good sportsman votes because it's a horrible, it's a horrible, horrible list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I so who, who, who plays Old World then? Because obviously, you've got people like ourselves who are coming from Eighth Edition. You've also got new players, and you've got people coming from AOS and 40K. Um, and obviously, I don't necessarily know who these people are. If I meet someone at an event. It's not the first question I ask you. Like, yeah, where did you come head? from? Yeah, I've seen you for a year. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah. you before. Like, but but it's kind of um, I've got to be honest. I mean, I, I was a little bit worried in the sense that forty k has a, a different culture to it, right? It's a lot more openly competitive, and um, I was worried that you know you'd get a lot of a different. I don't want to say type of person. It's just like a type yeah, of yeah, culture it's, of gaming. It's not. It's not being unfair to those guys. Like, it's yeah. their hobby and forty k has been a competitive game for a long, long time. Right, right. But I was, I was, I was with you. I was worried that the. Sounds like I'm sort of like being really mean to people. I don't, I don't mean that, but yeah, yeah. The feel of events because the events are always just good fun. Right, like, right. Winning's great, and we, but it's actually the feel of the event itself that we we attend. Absolutely. Good time. I was all, like like yourself. I was worried about. Would that be spoiled? Like, would the new or returning generation not buy into that feeling and would it just be <laughs> competitive? And like, that is that's not what you sign yeah. up for, is it? You don't want to spend a full weekend just being hyper competitive. That is, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's awful. So I saw I saw this event pack right. I can't remember the the name of it. It was down on the south coast somewhere, and um, it was run by a a forty k player, um, and it had literally like four or five pages of the event pack was about etiquette and consent and dispute resolution and all this stuff and i kind of it just put me off wanting to buy a ticket you know and I, yeah, i'm not saying why, that that's why do you need to have that right exactly what, what who's coming like what, what what am i to expect if i go to that you know and and that's not i mean for all i know it ran really smoothly and it it was a great yeah, event it was, it was just being being greeted with that chunk yeah. of you best behave yourself or yeah. else almost was like oh my god like I don't want to go anywhere that's that yeah. hyper competitive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because yeah. the, the, like, the, the events that we've been going to before the old world came out, like the eighth edition ones, I guess you've got a smaller crowd of people. And yeah, for sure. You're seeing the same people a lot. And th- there was never anything. I mean, there's a few lines of sportsmanship in the, in the pack, and you know, the organizers want your feedback on how mm. the game's gone. But in reality, it was minimal, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I think in, in all the years I went to eighth events, certainly at the end, I think off the top of my head, I remember probably two sort of incidents that people had to go even really raise anything to a tail of. Otherwise, it's just 
yeah very lazy fair almost and just we we'll just talk through well worst case scenario dice it off and see what happens yeah yeah um, I know I've seen I've met quite a lot of returning people who didn't really play eighth like eighth wasn't for them like they mainly played sixth or seventh edition and then the since or the eighth really ended and then they did play AOS um so I've met some returning players at some events that's been that's been nice who played sort of Warhammer at the top end <laughs> Years ago, right, um, and they've been like they, they've it's been really lovely to meet those guys. They've they've came with that same ethos, like they they play well, but they play in a really good way. So um, that's been yeah, really that's what you're like, I've, I've, been, I've been to oh god, how many old world events have we been to now? Um, Warhammer World, the Leeds one, Triple Crown, Derby. I'm in four or five now, and I've and I've and I've enjoyed all of them, and yeah. I've not had any anything but a good time. Yeah, with yeah. good friendly people playing. Absolutely, and I and I enjoy myself when I'm playing to win because that's how I like to play. Yeah, but there's, there's probably no some players. Who think I'll, 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 I'll anyone should ever apologise for wanting to win a game. Right. Right. Oh, and you've won best sportsmanship a couple of times, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, once with a um, a flying vampire scream list, so. <laughs> I've obviously, I've obviously Jedi mind tricked people into just thinking I'm actually just, I just smile and laugh a lot and they're like, oh, that yeah. guy's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> just make the, you take all your models <laughs> off, take your models off, mate, and then you're still going to vote for me, yeah? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think it's because like, there's nothing, and, and I'm really passionate about it, like, there's nothing wrong with wanting to win a game. Absolutely, yeah. But you want to win in the right way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, do, so do you think that the, um, do you think that so well? First of all, do you think Triple Crown was representative of of the scene as a whole, or do you think it was more Eighth Edition players that were there? Oh, I mean, in many ways, I really hope it was representative. Yeah, because um, and... there were definitely some new faces there. Lots of new faces. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and personally, I think it's a real shame that they've made the decision to go back to Eighth. Um, if I'm honest, because the reality is, I've I probably won't attend another event because I mm-hmm. won't play eighth because I'm like old worlds out now. I don't need to play a dead game. There's a live game to play. Sure, sure, sure. Um, it's not just but again my opinion. I'd, I'd play the odd game of eighth friendly, but I won't travel around the country and do the thousands of miles that I happily drive to yeah, play yeah. a game when I can play the live game that will hopefully evolve. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, yeah, I think the timing's curious that that because obviously they they they've stuck with it. And they've they've really dived into it. They've rebased oh, yeah, absolutely. the battle. They've done it fully for a good six months. And then just when things are kind of um uh, you know, the community people are starting to form their opinions about it. Like, you know, like you and me, I've been to a few tournaments now, you've been to several. Um, people are starting to say, okay, this this is good, this is perhaps needs working on. GW might bring out a match play guide and all this. Then they've at that point they're saying actually that, we're going to continue yeah yeah it's, it's odd I think the timing's strange because yeah. I mean don't get me wrong if someone's not enjoying the game then don't play the game and play whatever edition you want it, it's your hobby it, you hobby however you want to um, I think all world because it's so new and because it's such a relatively like, not not so much a new edition it's a new game like it will change I'm I'm confident it will be it will evolve. Mm. Um, and it will be a bit of trial and error um, and I, I'm hoping GW take a lot of advice and to be fair if you can't live in hope what can you live in so um, I'm, I'm optimistic <laughs> I'm optimistic about it um, absolutely yeah yeah. but that makes it that I can triple crown the events which have always been excellent I've had the same feel in all the other events I've been to so far as well they've all been very friendly and yep. hobby orientated rather than competitive orientated Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think I mean speaking to to James and um, and Max after the event, they they basically said to me, and I'm, I'm sure they won't mind me sharing this, mm. um, but uh, you know when they play on the weekend to record a, a battle report, that is that is when they play. You know, it's not like yeah. they've, they've got loads of other games, and that's that's what I like about their channel because it, it is literally like guys meeting up on the weekend playing a game, yes. and they've got the banter, and it, it's not like they're preparing it no no they're just that playing. is a real game they're playing yeah and um, i think it's important that, that comes back to if, if they're not enjoying it then it's the right decision for them yeah exactly yeah um 
and and I think to, like, James was very open as again to always when I talk. He wasn't really feeling all world. So yeah, absolutely yeah. then then there's I mean, good luck. I like, I generally hope he still just has fun playing eighth and yeah. that maybe he'll revisit all world as it evolves and hopefully it turns into more of a game that he can get on board with. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably less of an optimist than you, though, in the sense that I... I, I can... <laughs> You're not sure they're going to do any of those things. <laughs> well, no, I mean, well, I, so this is good discussion, actually, because online generally, right, there's so much positivity. And positivity is a good thing. I'm not trying to knock that at all. Um, but it almost seems like, especially like on YouTube and stuff, everyone is like, everything's amazing about Old World. And the, uh, yeah. the the obvious flaws, I think, get get swept under the carpet a bit, as if like, no, don't worry, this is going to change. But some of the flaws mm. are in the, Very obvious, are, I mean, in the core. I role. think skirmishers are broken, right? Um, especially flying skirmishers with three hundred and sixty arc is just insane. Right. Like, it's insane. Okay. Um, I love the game. I, 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 frankly, I love any game that, that I just nice to have. A, it's nice to play one more again. That's supported. Yeah. Is, and, and at the minute, we're probably in a very bit of a honeymoon period where people are like, ah, it's, it's new, it's back, yes! Like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can take my off. big dragon again, you know? Yes, yeah, and I think, yeah. you know, the, the reality is that probably will wear off and people yeah. will then start to be more critical of the game. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think, like, I, I'm glad you mentioned the skirmishes. I think they went way overboard with that because, like, take Orcs and Goblins, for example. You can take skirmishing core, orc boys, goblins, wolf rider, you can have your whole army skirmishing mm -hmm. and just play AOS. And, and I'm like, well, yes. why? Why, why yeah, do you, that? <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. If you want yeah. to play a skirmish yeah. game, like, I, mean, I, I, I don't play AOS, so I can't comment, but like, by all accounts, it's a good set of rules. Yeah. Like, for a skirmish game. If that's what you want to play, like, there's, a, there's an addition over there. Go play yeah. it and have fun. <laughs> um, and I think, I, I mean, I, I do think that is a, is a flaw. In all world, like having skirmishers are a problem. I think having a 360 arc whilst riding yeah. some sort of semi monstrous creature is a little yeah. bit insane. Yeah, and you just can't avoid it. But there's no way you can hide from it. <laughs> no, you know, yeah, that's it. Like, and that's why you see Brett, for example, with the, uh, yeah. whichever build you want to take, whether it's uh, Heroism, Knightly Temper, and the Ogre Blade, either way, they're terrifying for anything else on the board. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is a problem. Um, I do agree with that for sure. Like the, the the game is not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I'm just I'm just going at it as optimistically as humanly possible. Yeah, and 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 I'm with you in the sense that because it's new, because it's brought so many players in, um, it, it, that's what we've got, you know. And uh, in a sense that we you know we should work to try and make it make it work. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, hopefully in time things. GW will, will will evolve their thought process. Like I don't know how long, I don't know how long that might take. But I think in the meantime, you may well get some um, tournament packs or house rulings to adjust some of these things. Mm. Now, like personally, I think it's too early yet. People are just learning the core of the game. Like I think it yeah. is too early to put comp rules and restrictions beyond the. Some of the rules of three and stuff like that's been mentioned a lot. I think it's too early for that, but I definitely think it'll come because I think you're right. There's there's some real obvious flaws in the game, and that will eventually get comped. But if we think back to anyone who played Eighth Edition at the start of Eighth Edition, that was also an absolute shambles, and that is why you got the rise of like Swiss comps, tally comps, yeah. um, sorry Swedish comp, tally comp. Um, all the different way things to make it remotely playable because yeah. in early edition it, you, you took the the things that worked and it didn't matter what was across the board from you that would steamroll that because that is how eighth edition worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with time, these comps came in and the game became like personally, I thought it was amazing. I love eighth edition, um, but eighth edition out the box is not the eighth edition most people play. No, at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it needed it needed a comp system. It needed it needed something. I, I wasn't in it when Eighth Edition started, um, but I can I can see back on old old battle reports with people taking like three big hordes of infantry, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, just crushing in the board. With, it's just like okay, it's a new rule. Let's take advantage of it. Let's play yeah. it. Um, um, but again, I think and, and I, I'm thinking all world will probably be the same. Like there will something will happen. Like someone will come up with some sort of comp system. 
So how how could you make infantry more uh, more desirable then? Because in terms of just fighting and hand to hand combat, um, the the only way they're going to be strong to get more attacks is to put them in a line. There are ways, of course, in which you can manoeuvre and you can use drilled and so on to get into get into a line quicker. And then if you get a chance to fall back in good order and reform or reform after pursuing or whatever, you can spawn into a line. Mm. But it's still not how you want to play the game. It's, yeah, it? it's not the same. Um, I think hopefully a lot of it might be when we move, if we ever, if we start to move away from just kill things. Because at the minute, like... Yep. We just kill things, and infantry aren't very good at killing things. Um, if we maybe if the if some sort of tournament evolves where it's about holding table like, like table quarters or mm. getting an objective, would dictate maybe that it can only be held by infantry, or that you need a certain unit size. Yeah, like, I think there's there can be thematic ways of bringing infantry more worthwhile than just okay. a power creep or a, like it's it doesn't have to be an arms race all of the time. Right, right. Um, okay, yeah. So more objectives and yeah, I, I yeah. think in a more objective-based scenarios where they can hold something like, and they'll gain, I don't know, two hundred and fifty victory points, which yeah. is a, a real significant chunk. Yeah. So only infantry can enter a building, for example. That's an obvious yes. way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think things like that would hopefully see infantry matter more. Yeah. Um, but still not the elite infantry per se. You just sort of yeah yeah that's true yeah, yeah. I mean like elves would probably still suffer because why would you take expensive elves yeah. to do that yeah exactly yeah um I think no, we, I, I'm sure we yeah we've got to find a way like I say if games workshop don't then people will so yeah if they don't I think the community will yeah um, I, I do think that um I don't know it was a good question because I think I don't know I don't know what the solution is off the top of my head truth be told um I do think. In the current moment, it is hard to see. It is hard to see, as the game stands at this very moment, a space for infantry in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what about dragons? Game. Then I mean, so so the community generally has a consensus that the dragons are very strong, and it, it's more the sort of unkillable dragon with three saving throws. Yes, is 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 the is the is the issue, isn't it? Um, I think, I think if. So without adjusting any percentages that you're allowed on characters, etc., yeah, you could limit the amount of points you can spend on a single character. That would fix the unkillable okay. dragon lords. That yeah. would be an option. Um, so triple and, crown did uh, only one flying behemoth. Yeah, yeah. So that that that, that was a, a way of limiting their yeah. them, but you could you'd still have a chaos lord. That could be worth six hundred and twenty-five points or something oh. like ridiculous like that flying around. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that might be something to, to limit them. You could, I don't know. Like, again, without I don't changing know. the core mechanic. I mean, just, if, if you yes. if, you, if you want to touch the core mechanic, I mean, you could say only two saving throws. Oh yeah, like if you, I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to think of ways you could do it yeah. without touching the core mechanic. Exactly, I'm yeah. not a fan of changing the git ha- rules as written as much as possible. Like, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, just go play a different game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, point. you could you could say limit the number of flying behemoths. I mean, I remember, I, I faced an army. Uh, it was Matt Matt Pascal's army. He had um, a, a king on bone dragon and two necrosphinx, right? So you had three flying behemoths. Yeah, I thought that was a bit over the top. But yeah, yeah right. I mean, I, to be fair, it's not. I've got I've got I've got those three things in my list for all my world this weekend. Hey. <laughs> well, because I'm, I always use mortuary cult. And I'm not okay, yeah. to cut this time, so I'm trying. I'm trying something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think flying behemoths themselves are too broken. It's when they also come with a, a character on top because that's what provides ward saves, etc. Yeah, and like ten wounds or whatever. Yeah, and ten wounds. Whereas, yeah. uh, see, a necro thinks that it's got six wounds. Yeah, like two cannons still kill can still yeah. kill that if you roll well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm with you. Two yeah. cannons are not killing a dragon lord. Period. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, the, the, the likelihood of you hitting and wounding is still high. However, you've then got to get through an armor save that they'll probably still have on a six up or something like that. Then a five up and a five up for most of the the quote unquote unkillable dragon lords. Yeah. 
and they're still very maneuverable, even though they're, they're not as maneuverable as they were in eight. Like they are like with you know, you can get a lot of wheeling in with, yeah. with marching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you've got a flying dragon. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, you're a flying dragon, like you're, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So what about magic then? My other my other question for you was, uh, or at least I guess something that I find a bit over the top as well, is is duplicating the spells, right? So Obviously, in eighth, you couldn't take the same spell twice, with the exception of the signature spell. Mm. Whereas in this, you could take two level fours on the same law, and then you're casting two fireballs, two firestorms, two whatever you know, two arcane urgent, two plague or rust. That that's something I'd like to to reduce as well, because like, it just gets. Yeah, I think boring. I think the multiple level four spam, an al- you could al- almost an alternative meta because what what can count a dragons where you can. Blast them with two wind blasts, and actually yeah. they might start taking wounds off. Or you just take an illusion wizard with the law familiar and maybe he's a power scroll to get the spell off when you want it, and you just cast mirage on him, and you just stick him like, all right, I won't kill you, but you'll do literally nothing with for your six hundred points while I try to mop up the rest of your army. Like there's ways around it. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, or you just play Bretonians and you just go kill him with your with your with the the. The, that dude who just flies around on his uh, Pegasus. Well, you blow the horn first, don't you? So oh, you blow the, yeah, you blow the horn just to really piss off that guy with yeah. the uh, flying dragon. Um, who deserves it, to be honest? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm. Look, I mean, I'm. I'm. It, I might sound overly negative when I when I talk about these things. I'm just. I'm just saying that the, the bits that I find a little bit like, mm. you know, do you really need? To duplicate the same spells, I mean, you could have two level. Like, there's there's six spells, right? So you could have a level four with the signature and three of the spells, another level four with the signature and the other three spells. You don't need, yeah, and, and you know, and maybe he's, you know, and maybe he's in time. That that might be one of those those sort of yeah. comp rules that we talk about there that you can only have one level four per law, possibly. Yeah. So if you want to go double level four, and I think of someone like Orcs and Goblins because they can get them incredibly cheap. Yeah, you can have one on elementalism. You can have one on war. Yeah, I don't know if they can take another law. If, if they can, you can. You could technically fit three in because they're what well, they're yeah. two hundred points for a, a level four goblin. Yeah, no, the, the night goblins can take illusion. The orcs can take yeah. that magic. So, so there's all different laws. Yeah, because I don't actually have an, an issue with multiple level fours, but I do kind of get where you, I definitely get where you're coming from about yeah. some laws. I find are just better than other laws. Right. And yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind having multiple casters on the no. same board, just not with all the same spells. Yeah, no, no and I, and I don't disagree with that at all. Like you say, if double double elemental is really the worst one. If you have double plague of rust, like nothing has an armor save effectively. Right, double wind blast, which is very powerful. Um, I've I've played against that kind of list a few times. <laughs> double level four elementalism. Yeah, yeah. Um, elementalism. I think it works well as a kind of defensive law. You know, because you've got the earth and ramparts where you're mm. being defensive. You've you know, got the the vortex for the dangerous terrain, people coming yeah. through you. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, and I think it it is elemental as my tent room when I've been when I've used my empire, like bless them, but they need all the help they can get. Um, right, right. But yeah, no, I mean, like, again, like, like, I'm enjoying the game, love the game, but there's, I, there's, there's there is definite things that could be amended to make it more balanced. But I suppose it wasn't... I mean, Goodfield tells us it wasn't written to be inherently a balanced game, per se. It was no, just... no, no. But I don't think any games workshop games are no. balanced in that. No, no. I mean, if you want to really balance... What's the, what's the same? If you want a balanced game, go play like go play chess. Yeah, right, exactly. White wins <laughs> nine times out of ten in chess because it goes yeah. first. So yeah. play drafts. There's probably a, more, probably a more balanced game in drafts or like Othello yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, so you're running your own event? Yeah, in October, um, in first sort of double two D event in Newcastle. So that's quite exciting, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to make it up there, unfortunately. Bit of a trek. A bit of a trek. Yeah, there's it's actually an eighth edition. Well, event I imagine same weekend. Sorry, there's actually an eighth edition event on the same weekend. Which yes, was... in Cardiff, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I haven't got tickets to that either, but I was sort of considering it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how yeah, is, that comp? is there any comp for the for your event then? For us, no, um, we have in, put in the rule of uh, rule of three. Um, okay. So that most people are using at the minute. Yeah. Otherwise, truth be told, no. And we've we've also gone with no painting requirement to okay. 
well, that's encourage more people into the hobby who may not have existing armies. Right, right. Um, we're going to go with the five, the, just the rule book scenarios, with the exception of um, breakpoint, whatever it's called. You know, the one you kill. Like, I, I, I don't find it particularly ideal for a. Well, I'd be honest, I don't really for a competition. It's I don't think it's the right scenario. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, the one the, the event I'm going to this weekend has breakpoint as one of the missions. Does it? That should, I'll, I'll be interested to hear how that goes. To be honest, but it, it doesn't say on the compact how it works for the twenty nil scoring. Like, <laughs> you'd have to. I'd have to ask them when we get there because uh, yeah, I just don't see how it works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So unless we'll, we're going, unless the competition were to be a win loss draw scenario, yeah. But it, it, yeah, with, right. with a twenty nil scenario, it's it is different. Yeah, or maybe um, just the game ends when at that point. Yeah. And then you add stop. Uh, yeah. And then but we we have we have tweaked the 20 nil scoring ladder on our oh, event. Yeah. So it's harder to get a 20 nil. I think we've moved it to 200 points rather than 150 where I think a lot of events are at the minute. Yeah, the 150 because then it only goes up to like 1500. Yeah. Difference, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we've we've gone to try to you can still 20 nil someone, but it, it's a yeah. lot less likely and a lot harder to do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that makes no sense. Yeah. Twenty <laughs> Oh, you can still twenty nil. So. But, oh, you can still you can, but like it's yeah. it's going to be a massive swing. Like you've got to yeah. almost genuinely table someone and yeah. lose nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but even with the one hundred and fifty point brackets, the, the twenty nils aren't that common. In this, in no, they no, they're not. To be fair, yeah. I think you've seen a lot less of them so far. Yeah. Than you did previously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, to, to, do you think it needs the rule of three? The rule of three. Um, what do you th- what do you think about the rule of three? I, I do think... you have an exception for core units? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think something is. No, I say yes. I'm, truth be told, I'm not. I'm not sure. I have to look at the pack. Like, I wrote it. I wrote, I wrote it like two months ago. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah the events I've been. I've spent all my time looking at other packs that I'm attending rather than but rather than our own. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's a good thing to limit like spam spamming things. Yeah. Like I don't know. Lots of tomb scorpions would spring to mind, maybe it's because the or lots of single dragon ogres. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, it makes I, think it, I think it is a, a good amendment to to adjust that or the like, gyrocopters and all that. Like there's certain things that you could just throw loads of stuff at, which yeah. again similar to I don't know, the same ethos. It's not I want to see more rank and file on the board. And I when I still haven't come under a of a way to yeah. Push people down that route yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I still haven't built my skeleton. I haven't rebased me Tomb Kings from eighth. I've just built a completely new Tomb King army. Oh, have you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, looking <laughs> for punishment and the skeleton. So like the skeleton horde, bit of dry brush, and I'm done. Right. Um, but I haven't built my new set of skeleton spearmen yet. But I will. Come determined to somehow make them less than pointless. Oh, sorry, more than pointless. Yeah, so I think that skeletons are one of the exceptions. We, you do yeah, see blocks you of skeletons. break them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see blocks of skeletons. You see, obviously, you see night goblins because they unlock the fanatics. Yeah. And, and you see um, chaos will take some forsaken yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. And the, um, the other one you see is, is, is dwarfs. Like, um, oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who, who wants to touch that um, hammer unit with all the stuff that goes in it? Like, oh, like, that want nothing to do. I want nothing to do with that. I just want absolutely yeah. nothing to do with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm I, so obviously I've got a dwarf army, and I'm, I'm I've been considering how to kind of make it work for old one. I just I can't make up my mind. I, I honestly cannot make up my mind. I've been have had sleepless nights, like trying yeah. to think how how can I make a dwarf army that is is good on the tabletop, and I'm I'm comfortable playing I it think, myself. I think that's the I think that's the challenge. Good on the tabletop. And what you want to play? Yeah, uh, I think I think I think the Iron Drakes, which I never I never really liked the Iron Drakes because I think the models look a bit like Space Marines, and I, I I just I like the traditional look of the of the dwarves, and I just there's something about them I don't like. It didn't quite fit with you. Yeah, but they're so good in the game. Oh, incredible! They're incredible for the points. I, I just feel like I've got to take them, and I oh yeah. yeah. You- have to take two units or three units in rare. You just yeah. have to. Because you, <laughs> yeah. you want to, you just have to. They're yeah. better than cannons. And they're your answer to dragons. Right. They're better, they're better. Exactly. They're better than cannons. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, with the exception of range, they're better than cannons. Fact. Yeah. 
So they do more damage. They hit and wound just as probably more regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually think point for point, sorry, not quite with Iron Drake, but I was just thinking of War Machines there and I was, I was off on a tangent. I think point for point, I think both for us are probably the best War Machine in this, this mm. edition. I just both think good. Yeah. Stable, reliable, and consistent damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got both. Dwarfs make them very well with their runes. I and mean, I think Goblin, both for us, of the best 45 points only one spending in the edition, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I think with dwarves, though, the issue you have is that you need something that can reach out long range because yeah. if your enemy has shooting and can just outrange you, you're not getting across the board to reach them, right? So, that, if you're that, that's against... that problem, isn't it? It forced yeah. it almost forced you to play the gun line, right? But I'm so that's what I'm saying. You can't you can't just rely on, on your organ guns and your and your iron drakes and stuff because you know, wood elves shoot 32 inches. Empire shoot big cannons and stuff. And so if they can just sit back and make the dwarves try and get across the board, and they're not, you know, yeah, you need um, the grudge throwers and stuff to, to, to make sure you've got some range on your shooting. Yeah, definitely. And I think and that's why you see a lot of anvils as well, because I think they're yeah. really good yeah. now. Um, and their magic missile is incredible. Probably yes. the best magic missile in the game. Right. Yeah. 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 And closely followed by the Zenith one. I'm just happy that Zenith's magic's not terrible after it was an eighth, to be honest. I'm just really pleased about it that the god of magic has actually got a good magic spell. <laughs> I, I know very little, it's a bit embarrassing for me to admit it, but I know very little about the legacy armies. I just haven't really got around to sort of reading them properly because I'm still kind of like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I only read them so much because I've got most of them. Sure, sure. Um, like a. I've got my Chaos Dwarfs that I, I love to play. I've got my Vampires, although I haven't, other than testing that, the Scream list that we mentioned. Yeah. Um, like I, I probably won't play the Vamps in, in all the world. I probably will leave them for when I dabble back in the 8th edition. Yeah. yeah. That and the thought of rebasing 500 zombies. Just... Oh, is that I, your just, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't rebase 500 zombies. I just can't do it. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have that. I don't have that in my locker at all. No, 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 no. You got to get the adapters, mate. Yeah, and I'd have them for the test game. That I've got the um, the yeah. movement tree ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm I'm not rebasing anything anyway. Oh, I mean, you know, just put, you just even even new models that I make now will be on be on twenty mils and original ones. And I think the I think the 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 base extenders actually look good as well. To be honest, I think they, I think they look good. Yeah, I, I think they look good. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing mine sort of MDF, and so I can like decorate them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think they look fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fact, yeah when I, I, when I play they're... against someone at a tournament, I don't even notice whether they're using extenders or not. No, 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 not yeah. at all. I only ever notice with that on the smaller bases because they just they look dinky. If that makes, but when they've got the extender yeah. on, I don't even like genuinely don't notice because yeah, exactly. Right. Unless unless you see them unpacking their army, if it was just there, I don't even notice if they. No, no, I would. I think yeah. genuinely, I don't think I'd, I genuinely wouldn't notice at all. Yeah. Um, but so I know people, people some of the legacy ones are really lot. powerful, actually. Some of them are not. Um, like Dark Elves without the dragon right. is not not a good list. Um, right, right, right. Vampires are, are well, the scream list is disgusting. Beyond the scream list, I think they're absolutely fine, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Chaos Dwarfs and Sari might have been a budden vile type meta because they can get a lot of toughness seven on the board, which vile type can't hurt. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're the only army that has D6 wound war machines. Yes. Yes. But they only strength six. So mm. the balance is that they're hard at a wound with them, but when they wound, they do more or have the capacity yeah. to do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think all guys are good. I think anything with multi wound in this edition is naturally quite good. Although mm. they can just be kill and blood. But there's less kill and blood technically other than Carrot does. Yeah, there's a lot of Ogre Blade flying around, though. There is a lot of Ogre Blades flying around. Like every, every, Every Tom, Dick, and Harry army has got an Ogre Blade. Yeah. And I think like, that is under-costed as an item. You think it's under-costed at 65? I, I think so, yeah. Well, it's because it's it's minus 2 AP mm. and D3 wounds and armor being. Yeah. Um, and you can take that and a Talisman of Preservation. Yeah. And you're done. So that, that's what I'm taking this weekend on my weapon, yeah. And, and yeah, and, and I don't blame you for it at all, because yeah. why the hell wouldn't you? Yeah. And, and that, and you, you do see a lot of Dragon Ogres, mm -hmm. Multi Wound, Pegasus Knights, Multi Wound. They're all over the place, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's, I don't know, like, and I, again, I don't begrudge Ogre Blade, 
there's a lot of multi wound creatures out there that you yeah. need to kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do think it's under costed. And maybe that's just a bit of the Empire has been really bitter that the Rune Fang has had such a fall from grace this, yeah. this edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many things about a fall from It's funny yeah. how things that were the best in the previous edition just yeah. get. Just I mean, to be fair, that happened. A lot of the things that were terrible in eighth were really good in seventh. Right, right. So. Flamers of Zenith, for example, were incredible in seventh edition. Incredible. Yeah. No one took them in eighth because they were appalling. And yeah, yeah. Over costed, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, some of them just make me sad though. Like, like, like the foot of Gork is terrible, <laughs> and he was so good in eighth. It was so good, you know. And now yeah. it's just. Oh. I wouldn't mind that some of them. They could have just changed the name. Um, yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't hurt as much. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> if um, the ones that are the same name, you're like, ooh, oh, it's not that. But uh, going back to Chaos Wolves, I was looking at it the other day. Um, the Lamasu, it's something like 95 points, right? That's incredible. It's, uh, 95 points, that's and incredible. it gives you it gives you plus three wounds, magic res three, it nullifies magic weapons, gives you close order, gives you fly, all for 95 points. Oh, it's, it's... It's comfortably one of the. It's amazing. I mean, my lord was on the Lamas out because it's just yeah. too good not to take for that points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it should be like one hundred ninety five points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing it doesn't give you any bonus toughness, but then Chaos Dwarves have items that you can take to give you a bonus toughness. Right, right. Um, so you can take one of those, and because your base at toughness five, your toughness six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're really worried about Valtade, you could take a second one to get to toughness seven. It would put you on initiative zero, so it means you couldn't attack in combat unless you're charged. Because <laughs> if you're initiative zero, you can't attack. So can you go uh, down to the initiative zero then? Doesn't say you can't. True. Um yes, so then, yeah. So but but it would mean that you can't attack because combat stops at initiative step one. Right, 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 right. Um <laughs> I haven't thought about that. So if you get into combat with it, you're probably you're going to rely on a Lamas how that doesn't have many attacks to do no, no. something. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think one of them putting yourself that Lord on Toughness 7, sorry, Toughness 6, is great because whatever you're in combat with has no magic item bonus anyway. Yeah. I mean, a dragon will probably still kill it because a dragon's got 6 attacks, strength 6, and D6 stomps. Yeah. But if you manage to somehow get a dragon into that, like, frankly, you deserve to kill the, the Sorcerer Prophet because the dragon <laughs> shouldn't get into combat with that because it can also fly. Yeah, and yeah. it's got magic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's good for the points. It's outrageous, to be honest. So people will know you, Scott, from your uh, your tier lists on on Spitfire Gaming. Yeah, I know. Mark, Mark needs to actually pull his finger out, play all well a little bit, so I can do another tier list for them. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's not too easy to build one myself. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm much more there for flavour than actually doing it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to see Mark this year because I normally see him like once a year at an event. Yeah. But I'm only going to Old World events, so at the moment, anyway. And I, I will, I, I will go see him at some point and take an Eighth Edition Army down just to see him because yeah. he only lives an hour away. Oh, okay, right. Um, so I've got no ex- well, He's got no excuse. He's got no excuse to not try Old World. If I just keep bullying him a little bit, eventually it'll get there. So are you, are you ready to do a tier list for Old World yet? I, I, I mean, I could definitely do a tier list. I think there's, I think there's. There's some questionable ones, but I think I think there's I think there is definitely in the early stages, and there's some definitely weak armies, and there's some definitely some stronger armies for me. Yeah. So I, I I personally think that Brett's and Tomb King stand out above the others at the moment, and I know they're the starter packs, but I think they really do. Like maybe it's just because people have had longer to figure them out. Mm. I think Bretoni. I definitely I definitely agree that Bretonians are probably the more the best army at the moment. Um, I would actually probably closely follow by a beastman list. Oh, okay. Um, because they can answer dragons as well. Um, like Vileteid will pretty much kill whatever he, if you Vileteid had three fetish, yeah. five dice. All right, it's wound on sixes, but you reroll your failed wounds. No armor save. Oh yeah. Will kill whatever you, whatever you want. All right, the range is little, but I think beastmen. And then they've got access to dragon ogres, which are excellent. They've got access to gorgons, which are excellent. Yeah, yeah. Then they can they can really do target saturation well. 
they don't have much fly though, do they? No. So you can, you, can, you can chaff yeah. them and you can yeah. they'll probably be able to chaff whatever they want though, because they can take lots of they can, they can get very cheap chaff really easily. Yeah, sure, sure. So a good player would know how to use them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm just thinking that the at the if they were played up to their optimum, I think Beastmen yeah. are probably right up there for me as the, one of the most powerful armies. I think um All right, okay. Tomb Kings, Mortary Cult is an incredibly yeah. powerful army. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, think Tomb Kings are incredible. I yeah. think Tomb Kings Grand Army is a lot less powerful. Okay. Because it doesn't have some of the tricks of the trade and it has to pay for more basic core. Um, yeah, yeah. It's still a good army. Like, it's still up our levels. But I think Tomb, like, Tomb Kings, I'd probably put, like if I was to say, Tier 2. Possibly alongside Warriors of Chaos. Um, I think this, the Tomb Kings have some really hard counters that I don't think Beastmen and Bretts have, which right. I would rank them like lower. Um, and my Warriors have the unkillable Dragon Lord. They do, um, and and Dragon Ogres. So like, hats yeah. off to them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I actually think in time, as the, if a dragon, if the dragon. Meta fades away. I think the Demon Prince is actually the go to choice. Ooh. Um, so if that does ever prove to be the case, then you heard it here first. Um, right. I think it can be more flexible. And I also think, as it sounds, it's got 360 degree arc because it's a skirmisher. Yeah. Um, Combined with another level four, maybe. Y- yes, that's, I think that's the, yeah. that's the way I would probably play Chaos. I would take a level four. And a demon prince, rather than just really heavily invest into a dragon lord. Yeah, yeah. But the dragon, the thing is, the dragon is you can't even target it really in this edition, can you? Because you know, if you give ground, it just restrains and it can go and fight something else. Yeah, it's just. Um, so- I mean, it depends. I've, I mean, I have beat the dragon lord with Empire State Troops, so these things do still happen. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, Empire can take uh, veteran state troops. With the Griffin banner, which gives them double co- double rank bonus, so they've got four ranks, four rank bonus. They've yes. got a banner, a close order for six. Put a BSB in there for seven. War banner for eight, and then you challenge them out with a champion. Yeah, yeah. And you've won combat by two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it can be done. And don't get me wrong, that's that's a lot of points in what is effectively rubbish. Yeah, yeah. But also, it's really hard to kill. True, um, because it's 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 a block of thirty troops. Yeah, they're veteran, so they're probably not going to run away. Yeah, they're yeah. from Terra, etc. Um, and whilst that dragon's coming at you, the rest of your army's worth very little, and you've got cannons. Yeah, yeah. The, you, the ability to wounds off the dragon and it gets into that unit if it fluffs, and even if it doesn't, it's only getting I say only a maximum combat uh, resolution of seven, and your statics eight. I beat you, and I outnumber you. Yeah, exactly. If you, yeah. Roll, if you if you roll high dice, I'm, I mean, I might chase you down. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, the the it's it, it is a shame that the combat res is sorry, the rank bonus is capped at two or three of a horde. Yeah, because that would give you more options of how to to break a single character in combat. Yeah, yeah, and that you know, I suppose it cycles back to what we mentioned earlier about how do you make them better. Maybe he's uncapping that a little bit might be something that people look at in the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But still, you know, your dragon can fly and it, it doesn't need to oh, go yeah. through that block of state troops, does it? It's gonna it's gonna want to avoid it. But if it doesn't go into that, like you could I mean this is very this is a very like very niche uh, section, but yeah. the rest of the Empire Army is probably worth nothing. True. Of, like if the dragon's not doing that, it's probably not doing anything to get yeah. its points back. And your cannons can either be pot shot it or killing whatever else is on the list. I haven't actually faced that many dragons yet. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's just I'm sitting here like, talking about a dragon meta. Um, no, I, I, in the, if I think the last triple crown event, I played a wood elf dragon. Chaos Dwarfs didn't have a dragon. Tomb Kings didn't have a dragon. I played a vampire counts dragon. Oh, my memory escapes. I can't remember what my fifth the other game was against. But I think two out of the five had dragons, so there weren't. It wasn't like yeah. every army's got a dragon. 
So I only played one, there was only one Tomb King Dragon, and that was it. The others didn't. And I've played Warriors of Chaos several times, and every time it's been a Lord on a on a Manticore, a Lord on a Steed, a lord, not and not a Dragon. So yeah, well, I think that Chaos Lord on a demonic mount. Mm. Like I think that build has really got legs because again, he's got 360 arc. Yeah. yeah he doesn't yeah. fly, admittedly, but the Chaos, he's still he's a Chaos Lord. Exactly, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's still essentially an unkillable Viking who yeah, has five true. attacks and will just beat you up. I mean, yeah. He doesn't need a dragon. Yeah, five attacks, to, five attacks to begin with. Yeah, yes, ah, yeah, and then he rolls yeah. a six. Oh, a, 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 is it a five? Or a, whatever, whichever the gift of the god is, which I think is possibly yeah. the best command ability in the game. I know, right? Yeah, it simply isn't. Oh, I've yeah. oh, rolled stupid. Ah, sorry, right, I've got to re-roll for that. And actually, stupid isn't even as punishing as it used to be. No, yeah. I mean, when it goes wrong, it could cost you the game, I suppose, because you don't get that clutch charge off, etc. But yeah, it's not as punishing as it was, and you've yeah. got LD ten anyway. Or nine to start with. What do you think about Impetuous? Because so I, I I actually preferred the animosity of Orcs and Goblins before. So obviously, okay, there's different types of Impetuous. So let's talk about Orcs and Goblins first. So so obviously, if you roll animosity in Eighth Edition early on in the game, your unit doesn't move; and it's a disaster. But it's only on the roll of a one, right? And now it's fifty percent of the time you've got to go charging off somewhere. To me, that kind of takes away any any sort of unit that you don't, the you know, a shooting unit that you want to keep out of combat. Gob- goblins, or wolf riders, or spider riders with bows, for example, I just aren't worth taking anymore because fifty percent of the time they just charge off somewhere. Yeah, I think um, as a rule, I quite like the impetuous rule. I think it's quite fun. Yeah. Um, I Things have the impetuous rule, which shouldn't. <laughs> that, 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 that I'm not disagreeing with. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think the rule is very good, and I think yeah. it adds quite a lot of flavour. Um, but I know exactly how you feel, because Empire Pistoliers have it, so I just right. won't ever take Pistoliers. Yeah. Ever. Exactly, yeah. Um, it, Basically, it, units, units that shoot shouldn't be impetuous. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got my bow. Wow, but I really fancy wheeling like yeah. a staff and getting involved. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it makes things like in in goblins or orcs and goblins. I think it makes things like the thinking man's hat, the thinking yeah, man's yeah. hat, like a must take on a character. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of must take magic items. Yeah, I think you should be able to play around with magic items and sort of. Really, yeah, yeah. That's where the, a lot of the fluff comes from, or the the character of your army as well with magic items. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's in the arcane journal as well. I think, I think, I think Games Workshop they've done a great job with the arcane journals because it's it's just keeping it keeping it moving, isn't it? It's keeping new things coming in, new options, and and they could do multiple journals for the same army if they wanted to, you know. Oh yeah, and I think that's what they've alluded to, isn't it? Like that's how yeah. they're going to continue to move the story along. Yeah, and I'm yeah. with you. I love the arcane journals. I think. Almost all of them have been a hit for me in the fact that yeah. well, like, the fluff that they brought. Yeah. Um, like dwarves with moving cannons. Like, that's just cool. <laughs> Whether it's competitive or not, it's irrelevant. Like, I think it's cool. But it's interesting how they've put, like you say, a must take item yeah. in the Arcane Journal. And even in the Orc, in the, in the, sorry, in the Dwarf Journal, they've put these dwarf carts which make your dwarf movement four, which is kind of a must take. I think, I think it is, especially if you're actually going to try to have a quote unquote. A, Combat or aggressively dwarf army, yeah, I think yeah, it is, yeah. Um, so although, yeah, it, it's it, it's a double edged sword, the, the Archangel, isn't it? Because they, they, they're driving them, they're improving the armies and giving you some fluff and extra options, yeah, yeah. They're not improving it, they're not improving them too much. It's not like, no, no, yeah, it's not. Too... I think the, the the of the Arcane army so far, I think. More true call for Tomb Kings is probably the most powerful adjustment to the core of right, right. Um I really quite like the flavour of um oh good lord. The Bretonian one that exiles. I quite exiles, like the exiles yeah. list. I think that's really cool. And and the nomadic wire is just it's just very cool. Yeah. And and I think that's what you want to read the arcane journal and just think, oh that's cool. I, I like that. Like that's got a little. That's got some different fluff to it. That's just yeah. got a real different flavor to the army, and like that's what you want. You don't. You don't want everyone playing cookie cutter armies. Like, they're, exactly, they're, they're encouraging the themed lists, aren't yeah. they? They're encouraging you to 
to take something different. I think what this edition will hopefully lend itself to is the concept of narrative events. Hmm. Um, is me hope as well because like I I love a narrative event as well. But I think you can do it whilst I think this rule set will help with that. Um, and maybe it's through that narrative as well that you limit some of these very powerful items, uh, very powerful army choices as well. Yeah, possibly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, narrative event you could go full on, couldn't you? I mean, you could say like. You know, for every monster you have, you have to have a unit of infantry, or, or yeah, or like yes, yeah. something like that. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and not just any. They're not just a unit of five. We're saying like ten, twenty, a block. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, like like this was it's, it's like how GW FAQ'd night goblins that it's only one frantic per ten. But that mm. just makes sense. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, it's absolutely. the absolute right move. Yeah, those sorts of things are. Are good for the game for me. Otherwise, yeah. you just have little blocks of ten goblins with three fanatics. This is nonsense. <laughs> Absolutely, it's yeah. just nonsense. It's funny how some of the armies actually mandate some infantry, don't they? Like, like beastmen have to take gore, and yeah, and rats have to take. They some do, pepper. but they only have to take gore. Can be as small as a block of five, I think. Oh, it can be five. Okay, I think it's five. I mean, it, it may be ten. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I suppose lizard men have to take a unit of Saurus warriors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this was what will be interesting as well. I think is it what is it in at two a.m. our time? The Nova Open starts across America. Oh yeah, and they said they're room with a, a roadmap, haven't they? The roadmap of the rest of the old world. Mm. Um, now I've 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 I've, I've I've sort of thrown out some prediction about which way we're going to go off the top. So I'll be interested to see if I'm remote if I'm right or not. So yeah. I'm going by the, I think the clue of their roadmap is in that, you know, the symbol on the front of the rule book. Yeah. And it's got, it's got Bretts and Tomb Kings together, as in op on opposites. Mm -hmm. And then it's got Dwarves and Orcs and Goblins as opposites. And then it's got Chaos and High Elves as opposites. So I think it's High Elves next. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, I think, uh, yeah, you're right. That, that's the thing. I think, like, I, yeah. I mean, I really love the picture on the, on the book. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think the artwork and the quality of the books they've done are really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not so much the uh, the the order of the um, the ordering of the army list. I think is 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 worse than it was. Yeah, in the fact that it goes infantry, then it goes cavalry, then it goes monstrous creatures. Yeah, yeah. It it is it's a totally yeah. Because you like, is this is this core? Well, that's, well, that's core. it. Well, that's it because because but it's the special rules as well. Obviously, they used to have like a bestiary section and then the army the army roster. They've got it all in one, which is fine. But then the special rules are at the back, so you're you're reading them. You see what special rules it has, but then you've got to turn back to find where those rules are. And some of the rules you're, are there, and some of them are at the back. And you know, what, you know, what I think I miss the most from army books the the index at the back with just stats on. Right. I think I just I just have like oh what's this toughness? Oh, crap! Yeah. I'm gonna find him in the book. Oh, him. No, okay, where is exactly, it? yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a reference sheet. Yeah, yeah I do miss the army reference sheets. Like, yeah. like I, they're a small thing, but it's one of those things I just miss. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I think the card sort of index or cheat sheets that are in the that came in the, the boxes other with the rule books, they're they're well laid out. Those like that four yeah. page. They're well yeah. laid out, but I, I do I do find myself missing a just a rules like a, sorry a, a statistics reference card or something like that. So you got those? Cards. Did you get one of the box sets then? Yeah, yeah. I, I bought the Tomb Kings one to rebuild me second Tomb Kings army. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> so like I, the, the the amount of undead I've got in my model room is just ridiculous. How many armies do you have? Um. So I've got. What have I actually got now? I've got two <laughs> kings for both editions. Um, I've got vampires, chaos dwarfs, empire, lizard men, warriors, orcs and goblins, demons, brets, building a dwarf army. Have I missed anything? Don't have I don't have Skaven anymore. I don't I don't have any elves. I've got dark elves. I've got dark elf army as well. I, I don't play oh, them. The um, <laughs> couldn't play them in eighth. I, I couldn't I couldn't lower myself to that standard. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I'll <laughs> let you off. Then. I'll let you off. <laughs> so you got eleven armies, man. 
yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I played them to various. Like, I mean, some of them are very unsuccessful. Uh, I remember you had a photo online of your Orcs and Goblins, and it was like twenty thousand points. Or oh yeah, there's about yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever taken an event yet. Um, oh really? Yeah, yeah. Never, never actually used them in a competitive environment ever. Um, but there's about twenty thousand points of Orcs and Goblins in in that room. <laughs> um, I have come up with a really fun looking list that we're going to hopefully do on one of our up, an upcoming um, battle report that's very Spider Rider centric. Oh, I like Spider um, Riders. So I'm taking I'm taking a level four, and he's riding a Rack and Rock Spider, mm. not because it's good, but because he can. Yeah, I um, think it's good though. I mean, the Rack and Rocks are a little bit weak in that they don't have AP, but I th- the issue with the issue with them is. I want to know how, how on earth someone justifies a Ragnarok's costing more than dragons. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're not bad. The issue with them is they're just really overcosted in a competitive environment. Where, yeah, why would you take that when you can take a lord on a woven instead? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The, the, a the goblin or shaman on a wolf in a wolf unit with the thinking hat, so he's not impetuous, but he's got reserve move, so he can move, mm. cast, and move away again. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but the Goblin Shaman on Arachnoroy, he's got 10 wounds, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's got a bunch just, of poison it's just, attack. It's just asking for the Brett Lord to fly in and just her all kill and blow. And then it's just sort, of, sort her off. And then who, every monster is. Uh, I mean, it's like you're going to fight five different... Like, you'd have to be incredibly lucky to fight five Bretts in a weekend, wouldn't you? Imagine. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what was which army was your, was your first love, then? The original Undead Army in... Was it third wow. or fourth edition? It's funny you say that because that that was my very first army. I wouldn't say it was my first love, but that was my first army. Was, was it undead? Great minds. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they had uh, mummies with four wounds each, right? Yeah, and the flail. And the flail. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I walked yeah, around. I, I obviously had that when I was younger, and I, I I got rid of all those original models, which is a mm. real shame because I walked around and say Warhammer World now. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah, undead were my first love, and have steered me greatest love. To be honest, like, oh, they have. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, in sixth, I played a lot of Warriors of Chaos. Okay, um, predominantly a mounted Zenith list. Funny enough, so interesting. Um, yeah, I would be fair as well. The heavy cavalry were just absolutely outrageous in that edition. So mm-hmm. it was the most competitive list because it was borderline broken. To be honest, and I was when I was younger. I was more competitive. Like I was. I really wanted to win. Like really wanted to win. I wasn't a great loser either. When I was, I think I was. I was similar to you, mate. <laughs> well, you, we're all young once, aren't we? We're allowed yeah. to. You just when you're young, you're more competitive. Like as you get a bit older, you just care less. Like actually, you just did it for the hobby because you just want to have a good time and have a weekend away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. What, you, what was your? What's your? What was your like first love? Because I'm. I think you used to. I always think dwarfs. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was dwarves. Yeah, um, I, I, it's funny. I, um, my cousin got me into Warhammer, right? And he was a high elf player, and um, and I always hated high elves. And, Good. <laughs> and so I kind of liked the armies that were against high elves, right? And so yeah, yeah dwarves and orcs and goblins. Um, so I mean, I, I basically just got three armies. So I've got loads of dwarves and loads of orcs and goblins, um, and I've got a demons of corn army. Oh, uh, I love your, to be fair, your Demons of Corn army is stunning. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's just like 2,500 points done, you know. Um, but but I've got loads of unpainted uh, orcs and dwarves that I still need to. But one day I will get around to do Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> the Pale of Shame just never, it just never, it never gets less, does it? You look at it and something yeah. else appears and you oh, oh, no. I'm never going to pay that. Like, it's like my life's work now, you know. I know. <laughs> um, and I found I found some orcs and goblins unpainted. And I was like, ah, oh, no, that army was all painted. Ah, oh, I'm not gonna have to go paint some orcs and goblins. And I eventually finished building my tomb kings. Like, I've just got stuff. Like we moved house, and like, was it 18 months ago now? And the, the, digging through the what was it, the shed in the old house to relocate to the model room in this one. Right, just got boxes and boxes of stuff yeah um yeah we moved house recently as well and i've got i've got this like chest you know which, which looks a bit out of place like it should have something like really valuable in it like gold bars or something yeah. <laughs> it's just like models you know yeah the, I remember the removal guy is asking what's in the chest 
I was like, oh, um, just like models. Yeah, stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're pro- by weight, they're probably more valuable than gold. Probably. Yeah. No, really. And 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 their their price probably appreciates faster than gold does. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so what what are we going to see in the future then from uh, from the Forgotten North? You mentioned battle reports. Yeah, so we've, we I mean, we had one very rough one, um, which I put out there just to see because to show people what our work in progress was. Um, we've since put a, another one out. We're looking for that kind of hour marks. It's a lot more cut down and less sh- yeah. dice rolls and stuff. So we're just still playing with the. The format a little bit maybe he's trying to do a bit of a mix and match um well that's what i mean there's more of a i've seen that format more recently because there's the there's the live ones where you see all the dice rolls yeah and then there's the, the ones i do which is just like telling a story from stills mm-hmm. and then well, yours is kind of like actually, the, the, the version you do is one of my favorite battle reports to watch like, i love just a still and someone just talking us through cheers I yeah i can have it on enjoy it whilst painting exactly so exactly. I don't miss anything because I'm listening to it and I can just look at it. Oh yeah, and yeah. Off I go again. <laughs> exactly. That's 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 the idea. Yeah. Um, but yours, you're you're playing a bit, and then you're talking through what just happened. Yeah. And playing a bit more, talking through what just happened, which is kind of a new a new uh, yeah style. Because I, I was going to do the much more sort of the like, still version, like, like similar to yourself, because that yeah. actually it's just it's a format I really enjoy. Um. But to be fair, Andy's kind of taken the lead on recording them. Okay. Um, and he's like, "Oh, can we try this for you?" I was like, "Oh, try whatever you want." Like, I just—it's just an excuse to play some Warhammer for me. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, let's go. Yeah. Um, but it—it it works for us at the minute. Um, we'll maybe try doing a, the, the longer format, but we—it's we, also the time like, our chance to see each other and just catch up. So we tend to just get quite side like we, we go on segues and talk about all sorts of crap and. Like nobody wants to listen. Well, someone might want to listen to it, but probably probably not. Um, like I'm aware I'll just chunt her on for hours. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're gonna we're still we're gonna aim to do the aim is a podcast, uh, a battle report every other week because we're gonna aim to play once a week and record. Okay. And then have them come out pretty much every fortnight if we can. Um, and then in, the, in between that, do a do a bit of a podcast and um, where. Anyone who actually does want to listen to us just chunt around about old world can, and I will. Well, I'll listen to them anyway. So. Well, I, pre- I, pre- I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so at least you know someone's out there just as I just chunt her about nothing. Um, <laughs> I do. I, I would like to actually sort of sit and talk through, do a bit of a tier list. I think it's quite interesting. That yeah. My opinion of what a strong army is. Sure. It's definitely not the, especially so early in addition, it's not the same as somebody else's. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think early on, because it's so the game's so been so in flux, in such in, in such flux because it's so new. If you have a couple of bad experiences with a certain list, like, that'll almost set your mind that that's a really good army. Yeah, yeah. It could just be a real hard counter, or whatever you're playing. But I think true because it's so new, you're not seeing the net lists. You're not seeing like real same builds even. I mean, I think we think the Triple Crown one on table one for the to win the event. We had Luke and Jack both on yeah. Bretts. Yeah, both both actually really quite different armies in lots of. Uh, I mean, not Matt, they were both Bretts, but so sort of one had the Green Knight, one yeah. went double fly and Lord. Yeah, um, one had the Horn, one did it. Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Even at that top end of the same army, they were very different lists, and I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I mean like Warriors of Chaos. I mean you 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 just said they're one of the best ones. I haven't lost against Warriors of Chaos yet, because I don't think so. Someone someone might be writing in the chat right now. Oh, don't you remember that game? Yeah. Yeah, but, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you liar. Yeah. Um but I don't I don't think I've lost against Warriors of Chaos yet. Um, it's um then again, that might be that might be more my impression because as predominantly playing mortuary cult, what yeah. they don't massively appreciate a lot of the time. Is when huge flying monsters run at them and get into combat in turn two, right? Because then none of your stuff is very threatening. Yeah. Because once it's in combat, like it's just going to do whatever it wants. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I... so yeah. On YouTube, obviously, you got the you got the the battle reports. 
there's the podcast. It's funny because I, I actually think that the so the battle reports it takes a lot of your time to produce, you know, yeah. and well, it's great fun, and I, I enjoy doing it. And the reason I do it is because people tell me that they really like it, mm-hmm. you know? and if people are giving you feedback and telling you that oh I follow your your battle reports and I like your commentary and stuff, then that inspires you to do it, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I I always watch your battle reports. Like, I really enjoy them. Oh, cheers! Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, but I like the style. You know, I used to watch a lot of back in in the day. I watch a lot of uh, one spitting or scaven yeah. and AZ who are who did very similar to yourself. Yeah, style. yeah. yeah. And like, I really enjoy those battle reports. Yeah, yeah. One spitting inspired me to, to to do the channel. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they're great. Like, I think it's the really well produced. Like, look, much like yourselves, they just I can put them on, enjoy them, whilst doing other bits of the hobby as well, and that. Yeah. Like, Exactly. In a world where you've got limited time, yeah, you can you can be doing something and enjoy the hobby all yeah. at once, and I think that's but, a really but, good thing. But podcasts, though, podcasts, I think often they'll get more views. Well, not necessarily. So, so battle reports get a lot of views, but most people they 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 view the first few minutes and they stop watching because all they want to see is your army list and they want to see what your <laughs> army looks like, and then they they're not really interested. yeah. So we'll we'll watch the first few minutes and then uh, and then they're gone. But podcasts, they take a lot less preparation. They actually can get more views, more interaction because you're talking about more and people will will leave a comment and stuff. And they're kind of they're kind of easier to do in a way. Yeah, and I I think I think they're more. I don't know what what I'm trying to say. They're more engaging with the people who are just into the hobby as well because people who are really into the hobby are quite happy just to listen to people talk about their hobby. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and either agree or, or disagree or just engage. Uh, yeah. I think you're right. It's I enjoy listening to a podcast about like the things that I'm interested in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I always put YouTube on the background when I'm painting. You know, and I spend a lot of yeah. time painting, so I'm always got something on. Um, and I kind of sometimes just run out of things to listen to because I feel like I've listened to every single podcast on YouTube. You no, know, absolutely. That's well, that, I'm the same. <laughs> if I'm if I'm if I'm like painting on trying to build something yeah yeah youtube just goes on yeah i love youtube like i've got all sorts of <laughs> there's all sorts of crap on there there's like I'll, I'll i'll have all sorts of nonsense on but if i can have something warhammer related on whilst i'm doing it brilliant yeah 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 and i often put on these, these those those long format battle reports if there's not a podcast to listen to oh do you yeah yeah, yeah. but then sometimes you're like what what the hell has actually happened there because i'm yeah i'm only half paying attention to it <laughs> exactly um yeah. So I'm relying on them doing it, but also also narrating it because I'm not actually watching; I'm just listening. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I won't do though is the the news and like reactions, the live like. So you know, like a Games Workshop will, will announce something, and then someone yeah. will do an instant uh, half an hour kind of reaction to it, which I I got I don't really have an interest in doing that, but yeah. um, definitely uh, you know battle reports, podcasts. Yeah. No, agreed. I, I just, I love a podcast because well, it just gives you an opportunity to chat with someone who's like minded, who also yeah. enjoys a hobby that you like. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just talk about it. Like, it's one of the best parts of the hobby is just actually engaging with it in however, whatever format you wish. Yeah. 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 Um, well, yeah. Uh, I guess you might leave it there, didn't you? I know. We should absolutely do this again, though. You've got to get me on for, uh, well, Maybe not for a tier list because I don't really know all the armies that well. Um, but if you want to, be, if you ever want to talk about orcs and goblins or dwarves, oh yeah, that'd be lovely. Because um, I would love to do I had an army review, like, like semi deep dive, but even just through like my opinion, my eyes, and or yeah, yeah. someone who actually really knows the army. Whereas I'm really struggling to find orcs and goblins that I want to play, other than funny ones. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking about an all an all goblin list. Um, because I got those goblins that are unpainted as a as a as a long term project, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, haven't quite found the next the next project yet. Mm. Is it going to be really, I, I really want to. I want black. I want black orcs to work. Okay, but again, in a world where infantry isn't great. Yeah, yeah. And black orcs aren't cheap. No. Um, I just don't see where they. I don't quite see where they fit unless you're just taking a really little unit. And I don't really. You only take the little unit, so you can take a black orc lord. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that, that would be, that would be great. I'd, I'd, we should have to look at that for the future because it'd be really interesting to sort of do a bit of a 
army specific deep dives, which would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still haven't played you yet, actually. Have I? Have I no, we haven't, have we? We just we just see one another at events and chat <laughs> and then like, goodbye. I'll see I'll see you in another X number of months. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see you bought uh, 100 zombies this time, eh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That zombie horde list was outrageous, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, all right, dude. Well, thanks for your time. Brilliant. Oh, no, thanks for having us on. We'll catch you on the next one.